This is question five of the 2019 higher level Leaving Cert paper. On the screen at the moment is the paper itself, lots of drawing involved. So unfortunately, when we move to the whiteboard with me, my drawings are not gonna be quite as good. Only two questions here, and they're quite short. They're both quite short, but that doesn't mean they're easy. They're quite tricky to know how to do them. But once we do, we can answer them fairly quickly. On the left part of the board, we have part A. Part A simply asks us to draw, showing all construction points, the ortho center of the circle. Now the hardest thing about this is to remember which is the ortho center, because we learn um, at about four, I believe four, I might be missing one or two uh, centers to a triangle. There's the centroid, there's the circumcenter, there's the incenter, and what we're being asked to find here, the ortho center. So how do we do it? Um, the ortho center is the perpendicular height from each edge. So the, the line with the perpendicular height on it, should I say. So to draw that, I'm going to need a set square, which I do not have. So I'm going to use um, a, a box from a popular board, board game. And we're going to get right angles from every line. So we're simply going to get the right angle from every line to where it hits the, the, each edge of the circle. Now you should be able to do this a lot better than I can if you have a set square, that's see through usually. So we get this line, the perpendicular height. Importantly, that's a right angle. Now, amazingly in the exams, they will give you lots of marks even if you're inaccurate. Even if you had no rulers. Now there should be no excuse to have no ruler in the exam. But if you show them exactly what you were doing each time, you show them that this was meant to be a right angle, they will give you a lot of marks. I believe they'll give you full marks. Okay, so the right angle from this bottom line, we only, we'll only need two, we'll only ever need two of them. So you can choose which to go from this one, and um, this line here, the right angle off this, the right angle off this, you can choose which ones you want. Uh, I'll go for this bottom line, but there is a problem. The right angle from here does not hit the the um the edge but that's okay because we can actually continue this line down let me continue using this as a ruler we can continue this line down an imaginary edge of the line and we've been doing this for years to get just what we're doing right now to get the perpendicular height of a circle so if i draw this in i get this here this straight line here. Now this has not hit this line. So that's okay, we just simply continue it on. We continue it on down. Oh, I need a bit longer than that, I'm afraid. We continue it on down far, further and we continue this one. I realize you probably can't see this now. So this line here, and again, we'll just show them that this is a perpendicular height. So we have a triangle and we've been do doing this for years now, since you were children to show the height of a triangle. The height of a triangle often extends outside it. Now I probably could have put dotted lines in for these to make it less confusing. Unfortunately, I still don't have different colored pens yet. I'm still in lockdown. So we'll just have to make do with what we have. This is one right angle off, this is another right angle, and they meet here. If we were to draw the same one from uh, this line here, We'd continue it on down and it would come straight down here and hopefully hit the same point. I won't bother drawing it because it was too difficult for me to draw this in the first place. But that's it. That would be full marks just to show them these two lines. Show them that it's a right angle each time. And there you go. Label it um, whatever you want. Maybe a O for the center. Is usually we write O and you can write ortho center for that. I've put the question back up on the board so we can have a look at the correct drawing for part B, but I have copied it onto the board and it gives us a lot of measurements there, a lot of writing. The only important thing from that we need is that BE is a tangent and that B, sorry, DC is half the length of the diameter. Everything else should be quite clear from the drawing. So here is my attempted drawing for part B. I hope it's accurate enough for at least for us to work from. So I like, like I said, the important parts to note is that this is a tangent. B, E here is a tangent, which means that this is a right angle. 
and this this DC is half the length of AB. I'm sorry, one last thing I forgot to note is that this is parallel to AB. DC is in fact parallel to A, AB. So that allows us uh, for a few things. First of all, this triangle here, OCD. This OCD triangle is the first thing I'd like to note. Now you can write all of this in English, literally just the words I use or your own words, you can write in English to explain to the examiner what we're doing here. But I'm just gonna write a few numbers down. This O, C, C, D, and O, D. I'm going to write down that they are all equal. And that's because OC is the radius, OD is the radius, and DC is half the diameter, which is again the radius. So I'll just write that by saying OD equals DC and equals OC. Therefore, therefore this, um, this triangle here, ODC, is equilateral. Now, I'm not very good at spelling, so I'm gonna cheat here and look at a screen. Equilateral, there we go, lateral, is equilateral triangle. So, I, is, is equilateral, I'll, that'll be good enough for me. Which means all of these angles are 60 degrees. Let's just write that in on, this, on our paper, perhaps. That'll be good enough for the examiner. But you could go ahead and write these down a bit more formally. I'm mostly interested in this angle here, ODC. So I'm mostly interested in the angle ODC. That's starting at O, this angle inside here. That angle being 60 degrees. That's from the fact that it's an equilateral triangle. That being 60 tells me this angle here. And that's because these are parallel lines. We have a straight line here going between two parallel lines. That means this angle is equal to this angle. They are alternate angles. This angle and this angle is alternate angles. We'll write, therefore, the angle DOA, DOA equals 60 degrees. And we might write here why. We just might write alt or alternate. So I'm not sure how to spell that one. Forget, this is maths. We don't need to how to spell correctly. But the alternate angle, um, that means this, in fact, is now 60 degrees. And again, we can be writing all this in English if we want. We do not need to write off the terms like this. But now we have a triangle here, AOD, and we know a couple of things. AO is equal to OD. They're both radius. Let me write that out. OA is equal to OD. And um, we might even write little explanations here, like radius, just to tell people why that is. And therefore, the triangle AOD, AOD is an isosceles triangle. Um, I definitely know how to spell that, Is iso triangle. I'll just write iso triangle, which that means that this angle and this angle here are equal. And I can even write that again. I'm running out of a bit of room here. Uh, but therefore, the two angles AOD, AOD, and I'll write angle here, is equal, the other angle, ODA, ODA, this angle and this angle are equal. If we have equal sides, we have an isosceles triangle. Again, this is um, something we've learned from primary school, but it's just put, putting it all together. So if this angle equals this angle, and we know this is 60, 180 minus 60, just leaves 120, and this must equal this. So what's half of 120? Well, that's 60 and 60. So now we have all of these angles. We're, we're pretty much done, this is it, finished. Uh, I'm not even gonna bother writing any more out. You can follow along the same way, I think. I've run out of room a bit. But we have 90 degrees, we have 60 degrees. Look at the big triangle. This down here must be 30 degrees. That's it, finished. We could just write down here that BAE equals 60, ABE equals 90, therefore BEA equals 30. But don't worry, you do not have to write all of this. Just a bit of English to all of that would have been fine. Just they, Here's the steps that were important to them. 
they wanted you to point out that this was an equilateral triangle. So you could say everything was 60. They don't need to use the words, you just need to say all of these angles were equal and write 60 somewhere. That's what they were looking for. They were looking for you to get from this 60 to this 60. Or in fact, this 60 to this 60 would have, I guess, worked out. Um, probably not, because we don't have a line down this side. But they wanted you to tell you that this angle was 60. And how did you get that? You would have needed the alternate angle. That was another important bit that they wanted you to notice. And again, they want you to find out that this was an isosceles triangle. And therefore, it's an equilateral triangle. Because it makes all sides 60 again. And that's, we're done. That, at that point, they could have asked this question, what was this angle? That would have been as much information to them. This last bit was simply six. Well, I guess there was one more bit there. Once you had 60, they want you to notice that this was 90. That was the last bit of the puzzle they wanted. Making that 30. And that would have been full marks in that question. And that's a question that actually a junior search student, a much younger student, probably could answer. The problem is, it's also a question much older, smarter student would fail to answer. Because it's a, it's a question that doesn't require genius, really. It just requires noticing a little trick in it. A, little, a few little steps, which can be quite difficult to teach, unfortunately. So I, hopefully I've shown you roughly what you should do. But hopefully I can teach more in the next question, which will be question six. So hopefully you join me for that video and I'll see you there.